So the first part was really interesting, right? What we did was we learned how to go ahead and step through the beginning of a report, and we used the table wizard. We used data sets. We seen data sources, and we got to put all of that together. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to finish up this tutorial by going into styling and looking at how we do things like size, columns, and whatever else. And at that point, after having done that, you would have got your very, you would have got your fundamentals on how to start a report. So congratulations. Pat yourself on the back. Okay, there, I'm patting you on the back. Actually, I'm patting mine, but still, you guys see the point. And um, it should be a great one. So just hang on, and we'll get right to it. Look forward to it, definitely. Awesome. Boy, was it really nice to be able to bring in some data inside of report. I mean, if you're a beginner and this was your first time, then you learned that if you knew a little bit of SQL or if you knew how to drag and drop tables, you could use Report Builder to automatically build reports. And furthermore, just by understanding the tabular layout, you could do grouping, you could do expanding, some very nice behavior, some behavior, in fact, that's almost universal in all reports that you write, nearly. So anyway, very, very good. But one of the other things you got to do, though, in a report is you've also got to take, take care of formatting. It's the little things you do that help people focus their attention on the core decision-making process. For example, take a look at this for just a moment. So I'm going to click Run over here for just a second to preview the report. And, and notice in the sales column that this is ugly. Look at this. Wouldn't it be nice if maybe we had a dollar sign and a comma or something like that? I mean, something is that $10,980, you know, $10,980.60, that would be a lot nicer than just 10980.600. Then look at date. Here, date's actually got the time on it. Wouldn't it be nice if we could just say date's 15-2009 or something like that? I think that would be a lot nicer. Now, see, here's a traditional issue that you'd worry about. Typically, this came straight from the SQL Server database, right? So it's just respecting the values that are in SQL Server. And if SQL Server doesn't have those types, then they're not displaying in here like that. So what do you do? Do you go back to SQL Server and go change it? Well, you could try that and then get laughed at. Um, I wouldn't recommend it. No, actually, what you, no, actually, there's no need to worry. Reporting services will handle that just fine for you. We have what are known as properties, and through properties, we can change the look of data that comes into our report. So we can change the look of data that comes into our report on a report-by-report -report basis. So it doesn't affect all the other reports. It just affects you know, the report that you're actually designing. Very, very nice. Let's see how it's done. So I'm going to come back over here and click on Design first. And then what you want to do is you want to select the columns that you're going to change. So for example, here's some cells right over here. You guys can see that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on some cells and just get my little nice click there. There we go. I'm going to hold down on the Shift key and click Down arrow. So what I'm about to do is I'm going to perform some action on all of these different, all of these different cells over here, all of these some cells uh, essentially, right? And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come back up to number. And in number, I've got some interesting options, mainly relating to formatting, right? And I'm going to see that there's one of them called dollar sign. That's a standard currency. So I click dollar sign, just like that. Now, once I click dollar sign, let me come back now and show you what I did. Let's click run. And look, now that's not as ugly anymore. So that's significantly better. There's $19,338.40, $3,510.37,412. Much, much better. Okay, so now suddenly you're in a groove. You've just learned how to format, right? Good. I'm going to need you to do it again for step number three now. Um, we're going to come down to date and go ahead and change that. So continuing your groove, your groove now, your users now complain about the dates, and your users just don't like dates like this, 12 o'clock, you name it. So what you do is you come back and you click design. You, you tell the user, I got this. I got this. Don't worry. Highlight sales date right over here. Boom. Or a left click to make it select it. You guys see how I did it. Now, once you go ahead and you click on that cell that contains sales, group, um, sales date over here, what I want you to do now is come back over here, and this is our number tab again, right? Okay, now you've got two different options over here. If you come back to the number tab over here, right, um, you can select the drop-down list right over here and choose date. Or you could have just right-clicked on the cell and chose properties too, but we'll do it over here. So we're going we're, we're to click date on the drop-down list over here for just a moment. And now once we actually did that, right, once we actually did that, we actually then turned around and got date to come over. Now, if you want to, we can come further and go, go right-click over here, click on text box properties just to make a point. Click on number right over here, and then there's date. But look at all these different date times that we can actually choose. 
this is the default that shows up as that shows up with the two different slashes but we could have just as well as well have used monday january the 31st 2000 you name it all these different formats are right in here this tool is absolutely awesome look at that you know um you can actually change formats this simply this easily without having to go through and do a bunch of other things so we'll just leave it like date over here i like this default so we'll keep it and we'll click okay now click run and see if ugly is going away looking better looking so much better look at that we got clean formats you name it okay now that was a nice nice start right over there right we were able to come in there and actually make some changes but these column widths you know looking at our style again these column widths are just not doing it for us look at them i mean it's not displaying everything once again guys this is made extremely easy over here click back on your design again notice how notice how you got preview and design this is known as the design option Preview is when you run the report, actually, so you can see it. Design is whenever you actually, you know, just get it work. Um, um, design is where you just actually um, go in and actually do your work. Now, what you can do over here is let's just say you want to expand some of these columns. So if you, I'm going to click over here, and if you move your mouse, just click on one of these, you'll see that these two little gray things appear. One is the size of rows or the length. The other one over here is the size of columns, which you'll be more interested in. Here I'm going to take columns and I'm going to expand them out until I get to a point to where I'm comfortable with the report. So I'm expanding these out a little bit. I notice that product's bigger. There we go. Subcategory can be a little bit bigger. Let's see how it looks now. So I just expanded it out by clicking. I clicked in the table first. Then I came up to these two little gray bars, right? And I'm interested in the top gray bars to be able to change columns, right? Or column length, so to speak. Then I expand it out and now we're going to click run. Now I'm going to go ahead and expand it, make sure this looks good. Yep, this is good. Now I don't have the leaking and whatever else. Good. Very, very nice. Now, there we go. Now my users actually have a report. Okay, one last thing to do. Probably a good idea for every report. Make sure you title it. <laughs> I know that sounds so funny, but you'd be surprised how many times I've forgotten to do that when I've been on sites. So just come back over here and where it said, and where it said add on report title, I clicked on it. So I clicked in here where my mouse is moving. You guys see that? Now what I can do is because this is an office application, right? I can first come over to size and I can change it to whatever I want. I can also change, I can also come over here if I want to, and I can also change the actual, the actual font, but I'll leave it as Verdana. And I'm gonna go ahead and call this product sales right over there. So this is the product sales report coming over here. Now, what I'm gonna do next after I finish that is, is I'm gonna change the color. So here's how you do that. First, you click off the box like this, because when you change the color, you have to change change it for everything known as the text box. The text box is where you text box is where you see this little line delineating it, and you can see these little lines. That's a text box. So what we were able to do is we use those to place those usually above or below the report to include certain header or footer information. Although we can place them in other places too, and they display values. Now what we're going to do over here is inside of our text box, I'm going to change the color. So I'm going to right click over here left click on text text box properties then once I actually left click on text box properties over here what I'm gonna do over here is I'm gonna click on the font because I want to give them because I want to give a different color to the font in this case and then once I get on color notice over here I click the down arrow right over here so there's the down arrow right now it's a black font and then I'm gonna click on more colors now the color I want is called corn flower blue so I'm going to scroll down and get and find cornflower blue since that's what our tutorial told us to put. And it's here. It's here somewhere. Let me find it. Let me find it. Let me find it. You might have already seen me scroll right past it. I've done it a million times. Oh, there it is right there. So there's cornflower blue. I'm going to hit OK. Now I'm going to turn around over here and I'm going to hit OK right over here. Now look at that. It turned blue over here. So there we go over there. And if I want to, I can do one more thing, make it bold. So I'll just right click again, go back to text box properties and tell it that everything in this text box, I want to be bold. There, there's a check. And I hit okay. Now I've got product sales over there, so I'm gonna run it. And look at that, there's product sales right over there. So excellent. Okay, one last step to do if, should you be in SharePoint. You gotta save it back, right? You gotta save it back, save it back, save it back to SharePoint so people can see it. So I'm gonna click design over here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back and I've got an option. I can go with the file and let me just go ahead and save it. Now I saved it first to the desktop, so I need to save as file right over here. 
and I'm going to save as in this case. Now it communicates with my SharePoint 2013 reporting server. Just perfect. Now what I'm going to do finally is once I choose, it tells me, oh, where do I want to serve it at? Or, or where do I want to save it at, right? Um, in what location? And it remembers the last location by default. So you guys can all see that over there. So I'm going to click on Recent Sites and Services. Servers over there, right? And then there's brandondemos.com, my SharePoint site. And there's my reports folder right over there. So I'm going to click on the reports folder and then I'll just click Demo Tutorials and save it. Now it's going to communicate with the report server. Try to save it over there. You guys, you can all see that coming through. So everybody see that. There we go. Now, finally, to end this out, come back, open up my report server. Let's check the reports library. Excellent. There's